What I've got here is a Samsung T5 external SSD. And then I've got a M1 Mac Mini sat on top of this USB-C hub. Now here's the question. Will the drive run faster if I plug it into the back of the Mac Mini or if I plug it into this reasonably priced hub? We're going to find out, but uh, first we'll do a quick review of this interesting device. Everything tastes better from a Constant Geekery mug. Uh, shop.constantgeekery.com uh, Now some of you might be thinking, didn't you just review this hub a couple of weeks ago? Uh, well, as it happens, no. Uh, but I did review one quite like it. It was this uh, LSC hub. And I, I really liked the design, but uh, I was a bit disappointed and frustrated by the USB being limited to just five gigabits. Now this model from Queeslab, the UH25 Pro, doesn't have that limitation. And it has some extra tricks up its metaphorical sleeve. Now, full disclosure, uh, Queeslab sent me this review sample and I'm not required to return it. But as always, I only accept it on the basis that I retain full editorial control and I'm free to give you my honest opinion. And that starts with the unboxing. Uh, the packaging itself is nice enough and inside the box, we've got the dock itself, got that nice short USB-C cable for connecting to the Mac. And there's a bag of screws and fixings and I'll come back to those. Now, on the rear of the dock or hub, is it a dock or is it a hub? I'll leave you to fight that out in the comments section. I'm, I'm gonna go with hub. Anyway, on the rear of the hub, you can find two USB-C ports. One is used to connect the hub to the Mac Mini using that supplied cable. And the other one is for connecting a power supply, presumably to provide more power for devices which need it. Now I can't find any specifications to say what the power output of any of these ports are. And my testing was inconclusive, but I guess you'll know if you've got a USB device that needs more power, or if you've got a lot of power hungry peripherals that you need to plug in simultaneously. Uh, I've been using this without the additional power plugged in and I haven't had any issues. On the front of the hub, we've got first of all, two USB type A ports running at five gigabits per second. So the old USB 3.0 spec. And there's one type A port that's running at 10 gigabits per second. So think USB 3.1 spec. We've also got a type C port, again, running at 10 gigabits. We then have an SD card slot and a micro SD slot. Both of these have a nice latching mechanism and I do like a nice latching mechanism. Uh, this supports cards up to one terabyte and data transfer up to five gigabits apparently. Now the design of the unit is pretty nice and I think it matches the size of the Mac mini very well. Uh, the color though is not quite there, but it is very close. On the underside of the hub, we find space to install both a two and a half inch SATA drive and an M.2 drive. Now I've got this uh, Kioxia SATA SSD from the previous test, so I'm installing that. Uh, you could of course install a mechanical drive here and there's space for a drive up to nine and a half millimeters thick and up to four terabytes in size is supported. On the M.2 side, I'm installing a Western Digital Black SN750 NVMe drive. It took me a moment to figure out how the rubber grommet is used to hold the drive in place. Uh, the manual, as you can see, is not what you would describe as thorough. Um, anyway, you do get a couple of those rubber grommets supplied and some spare screws. And the screws are for the access panel. Personally, I would have preferred a screwless design for this panel, but maybe most users aren't that likely to be swapping drives regularly like I do. The SATA drive doesn't screw in place. And as this is quite a thin drive I'm installing, it didn't feel overly secure. There's a couple of sticky pads included in the kit. So I stuck one of those to the underside of the access door uh, above the SSD drive to make it a more snug fit. I've got no idea if that's what you're supposed to do with them, but it seemed to work fine. So now let's get on to speed testing. I'm just using Blackmagic's disk speed test to get a quick result. And I'm testing in macOS Monterey Beta 5 and Beta 6 because I was curious to see if Apple have improved that USB performance on the M1 with the latest developer beta. So first we'll test the SATA drive and we'll pop up this chart so that you can see the results. We got 340 megabytes per second on write and 296 on read. And as you can see, I'm also showing that performance in gigabits per second as well as megabytes per second. There are of course eight bits in a byte and bandwidth for things like USB is usually expressed in bits whereas drive speeds are typically expressed in bytes. So I thought it might be helpful to have both. 
Moving on to the NVMe drive, we got 598 on write and 575 on read. Now this drive is capable of much higher speeds than that, but in this setup it will of course be limited by USB bandwidth. What I did then is installed the latest Monterey Beta 6 and I redid the tests. And this time the SATA drive scored 349 on write and 295 on read. Uh, so basically no change with the new operating system. Um, but the NVMe drive now scores 618 on write and 680 on read and that is a considerable uplift. Uh, but I can't be certain that the test I did in Beta 5 wasn't an anomaly, and it's not simple to roll back the OS to retest it. So take that with a little pinch of salt, but it is possible that Apple are improving the performance of those drivers. And that brings me back to our intro question. This T5 drive is capable of speeds of around 500 megabytes per second on an Intel Mac or x86 PC. Uh, let's plug this drive directly into the back of the Mac Mini and test it. Now, I did these tests in the latest Beta 6, by the way, and the T5 scored 318 on write and 386 on read, which is some way short of the drive's potential, but it's exactly in line with what we have seen from the M1 so far. But what now if we plug this T5 drive into the USB-C port on the front of the Queenslab hub? Well, now we get 401 megabytes per second on write and 444 on read. So yes, it runs faster through the hub. 26% better write performance and 15% better read performance. Still a little short of full potential, but I'll take those performance gains. So what's going on here? I do have some ideas, but I need to do a bit more testing. If you've got any thoughts, let me know in the comments section. And just to help, here's how the system report sees the USB device tree. Another question that I wanted to answer is, how fast can you transfer files between the two drives that are installed inside the hub? I used a 26.35 gigabyte file to test. First of all, I copied from the NVMe drive to the SATA drive, and that took one minute and 13 seconds, which equates to 361 megabytes per second. Uh, that's slightly better performance than we got with the Blackmagic disk speed test. But going in the other direction, copying from the SATA drive to the NVMe drive, it took 1 minute 34 seconds. So that's about 280 megabytes per second, just slightly slower than we saw in the Blackmagic test for read speeds on the SATA drive, which of course is what is going to be the limiting factor here. So I'm pretty impressed with that performance. We're not seeing massive slowdown due to USB bandwidth limitations. Uh, when it comes to cost, this Queenslab hub is currently on offer on their website at $80, and I'll put a link in the description for that. And they did also say that they provide a discount code for viewers of the channel, so if I receive that, I'll add that to the description. Uh, the channel doesn't make any money from any sales that come from that. Now overall then, this product delivers exactly what it promises, and at this particular price point, I don't think there's much to complain about. It's a great solution for expanding your 2018 Intel Mac Mini or an M1 Mac Mini. And in the case of the M1, it potentially offers a performance boost with your external storage. Being able to have both NVMe and two and a half inch SATA drives installed is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'd personally put a large SATA SSD in there for storage and then have an NVMe drive for working space. Now yes, it won't run that NVMe drive at full speed, but it'll be plenty fast enough for most serious workflows. And the fact that it isn't running at full speed, well that probably means it's less likely to get hot. I also really like having these convenient SD card slots. And having three additional Type A ports, that's also nice to have. And don't forget that one of those ports is running at 10 gigabits. Of course, we are only connected to the Mini via a single 10 gigabit connection. So you're not going to be able to run multiple devices from the hub at full speed. But still, it's a nice extra to have. And the form factor itself blends really nicely with the design of the Mac Mini. So it gets a thumbs up from me. What do you think? Were you surprised by that performance with the T5 drive? I'm really looking forward to reading your comments. And as always, thanks for your likes, your shares and your subs. I'll see you again soon for some more geekery.